Well, thank you everybody for joining us this morning. Um, I'm Joe Hall. I'm pinch hitting for my brother today. Um, he's, I guess, under the weather and it's not because it was his birthday yesterday. He's been battling uh, some type of virus here for uh, quite a while. So they called me in and of course, I'm up in uh, Alaska where the sun has not even started to think about coming up yet. We're at seven o'clock up here, but I've got four cups of coffee in me, so I am ready to go. I woke up extra early. So um, today, of course, we're going to talk about uh, Alaska's best wildlife experiences. And I know we have um, some previous travelers on here, so uh, some of this might look familiar to you folks. But uh, this is obviously stuff that's near and dear to our heart. And, you know, it kind of goes hand in hand with the reason why our company has such a great success rate with our clients, um, not only just seeing the wildlife, but the mountain. And that's because we try to incorporate as many opportunities to see wildlife and glaciers and, uh, of course, the mountains. That's why everybody wants to come to Alaska. But we realize, obviously, being a small company, that most people may only get to Alaska once. So we want to give you the best opportunity to see all those different things, whether it be the mountains or the wildlife, um, that you, of course, have thought about for years before you come to Alaska. So uh, I'm going to talk really in the broad spectrum about things that we do in Alaska, uh, different wildlife experiences. And some of these are well, I should say most of these are included with the packages that we already have laid out. Uh, there are a few things that are optional, and then we can always piece things together. Uh, one of the big examples that um, we use for kind of an optional tour is uh, going out to Katmai. So if you're doing, let's say, a Grand Slam um, or our Untamed Alaska, which does not go to Katmai, we can arrange that for you, and you can go out there and add that to your package. Uh, but we do have uh, some packages that include stuff like that. So if you look at the map here, you can see uh, pretty much the whole state and you can see that we cover pretty much all of it. You know, we don't do the, uh, the Western side of the state just because uh, logistically it, it is very, very tough, but we're working on it. We're always trying to, again, add those new experiences and, and give people a reason to come back to Alaska if they have been up here with us. And so that's, again, why we're always tweaking these packages. But you can see there, a lot of our, our travel is done by motor coach where the green line is land uh, and then of course rail, but then we have flights that'll take you to more remote places. And of course, those are those red lines. So first up, I wanna start out with, well, sorry, I'm having an issue with my, trying to navigate my screen here. Um, let's see. Okay, so uh, the first thing I want to talk about is Denali Park, because uh, this is something that every single one of our tours does, and it's important because we do the longer trip into the park, and that's where a majority of the wildlife can be seen, and that's going to be, again, everything across the board, but that's, that's true most places in Alaska. Uh, again, not uncommon to see moose right in downtown Anchorage, so you always have to have kind of your eyes ready your camera's ready to get those pictures because it could come up at a place that you really don't expect it. So of course, going into the park, we are on the park buses and going all the way back 92 miles to the end of the road. But the animals that we're looking for, the big five as we refer to them, uh, the doll sheep, this is the reason that actually Denali National Park was created was to protect these sheep. And of course it's grown from uh, just over a million acres to about six and a half million acres now. So really, really large. Uh, but again, that road, it's one way in, one way out. Uh, of course, the moose, the caribou, uh, then the grizzly bears, which are what we refer to the bears on the interior of Alaska. And I'll, I'll show you the, uh, the coastal browns here in just a bit. The wolf, of course, they're the ones that are a little bit more elusive. And then we also have the fox, which you can see he's got another critter in his mouth. Uh, the squirrels or the what we call the bear burritos, if you will, in Alaska. So, uh, of course, we're going to see, like I said, wildlife everywhere, but you do need to be very careful. Um, 
I think everybody saw this as you went to different national parks that people think that these animals are there for your viewing pleasure, which, you know, they do live there, but we're still looking at wild animals. So you do have to be careful, keep your distance. In fact, if you don't know, if you haven't been to Alaska, uh, the moose are much more uh, actually dangerous to the humans than the bears are. Uh, the moose are, uh, they will run you down and trample you. So uh, when you're going to go through a little bit of schooling on these different animals, so we can keep you safe while you're up there as well. And of course, the views in Denali Park, phenomenal as well here out at Wonder Lake. Now, I'm, uh, I'm going to talk about the different flight seeing opportunities that we have, but for any of you that know me, know that that is not my forte. I don't like being in small planes, but it is one of the best ways to see Alaska. Uh, but the, being on the water is where I'm at home. And whether it's just viewing the different wildlife or fishing, uh, I'm happy either way. And we have a lot of examples where we will get you on the water as part of your tour. Why this is important is we have a lot of clients that think, if I go to Alaska and I just do a land tour, I'm not gonna get to see a humpback whale. I'm not gonna get to see an orca. Um, and with us, you do, because all of our tours have some type of small boat included with them. It could be a day tour. It could be multiple day tours. We also have uh, options in Southeast Alaska doing overnight boats with uh, Alaskan Dream Cruises, which is a small company. Uh, which has uh, just a 49, they have 49 passenger boats. Uh, we also have our new Platinum uh, Inside Passage experience that we offered for the first time in 2021. And this was something that was really in design before COVID hit, uh, going to smaller groups, but it accelerated it by about a year or two. So what we've done is we have chartered basically these uh, we'll call them mono hulls. They could be a catamaran, but they're about a 40 passenger vessel and they are going to take you from spot to spot in Southeast Alaska, much like our motor coaches do on the interior. So it's kind of an extension of what you'll do on the interior, but you're doing it from uh, the standpoint of a group of 40 versus, you know, some of these large cruise ships, which might have 22, 2,700 passengers on them. Uh, so we thought that this would be a good idea to kind of pivot and offer this to our clients, but I think we were really surprised for a first year product, how well it was received and how well things went from an operational standpoint. So that's something to definitely take a look at if you're not uh, wanting to do one of the larger boats. Now, the different boats that we have included or the different experiences we have included as part of your package, whether it's a Grand Slam or a um, not a Denali Explorer or, a, you know, National Parks Tour. We're going to be mostly on these boats you can see right here. A couple different examples. We have Kenai Fjord's boat. We use Major Marine. Uh, my favorite is actually out of Valdez. All of our Grand Slam tours uh, will be on the Stan Stevens boat here. And this actually is the boat that my wife and I got married on. And that's another place why it's very special to me. We went out on the boat, didn't have to worry about caterers, flowers, anything like that. And we just got married by the captain. And we actually have had um, some clients do that and take our lead. So if you want to renew vows or you want to get married, this is the place to do it. Nobody has to know. Now, Valdez, beautiful setting here right on Prince William Sound. And like I said, all of our Grand Slams will do that. Uh, some of the smaller boats we use, um, you know, that could be anywhere from our untamed Alaska to our wild Alaska uh, and also our, our national parks tours. Now, we're going to see, of course, all the different wildlife. That's, of course, what we're talking about here when we're on the water. But the humpbacks are the big ones. But <clears throat> going hand in hand with that, you know, you really can't talk about Prince William Sound without talking about the glaciers because it's, it's a combo tour. And a lot of these things are that we talk about wildlife. It's either a flight and a, a uh, wildlife viewing experience combined, or, you know, it's going to be a glacier experience with the wildlife combined. So um, from multiple facets, you're going to see these different things. 
course, the glacier here again. And then the, the uh, orcas. Now, the orcas, uh, they are always on the move, so we don't see them as much as the, the humpbacks, the, which are a lot more predictable during the summer months. Of course, all the humpbacks are up there eating, uh, but the orcas, uh, they are always on the move. And then we have just a plethora of other sea life that we're going to see. Of course, the birds, the fish, um, you know, sea lions, sea otters. And this is all done, again, on these particular day tours. And then, uh, of course, we have the overnight options as well. Now, here's a, just a video of a bubble feed, which is really, really cool. And it's hard to explain this without seeing it, but what they do is they'll circle those, the bait fish uh, with their bubbles and then they will come up in the middle. And a lot of folks will say, well, you have this $3,000 lens. Of course you can get pictures like that. Uh, but this was actually one that I took. I know it's kind of blurry, but it's a cell phone uh, photo that I just threw it up in the air when I saw the bubbles coming. And you can see that some of the crew is in front of me. Uh, everybody else was down at dinner and we are getting very, very close to these humpbacks. And we can do that because we are on the smaller boats. Obviously the large cruise ships, they don't want to get anywhere near uh, these humpbacks because Neither cruise ships or humpback whales are very maneuverable. And then, of course, on the overnight boat where we have Alaskan Dream Cruises, we will actually have an opportunity to get out on these in smaller inflatable boats, what they call a dib, and we'll break up the, the group into smaller groups and we'll take shifts out there where you can get up closer to uh, not only the glaciers, but the, the marine life as well. And another thing I wanted to mention, um, if you're, you've been on winter tours or you've never thought about doing winter tours in Alaska, we do have a couple of things that we've, we've uh, added over the past few years, which have really broadened what we're going to see on that tour. This is a, a picture that I took on our winter tour this year. Uh, it's the start of the gray whale viewing season. And so we, on this particular day, it was one of the first days they were out running but we didn't see any gray whales, but we did see orcas and we saw uh, the puffins and we saw the sea lions. So we got to see a lot of different things and this is in mid-March. So uh, really cool that we're able to do that as part of a winter tour now. Now my favorite part, talking about the planes. Um, of course, I've done this. I've been to a lot of these places, usually not willingly, but because I have to go with a group but uh, I'm still looking for that perfect medication that'll allow me to relax as I get on these smaller aircrafts. Now, a couple of the things that you have to do in order to, again, get to these places, you have to get on sometimes one, two, three airplanes to get there. Uh, Brooks Falls, this is out at Katmai National Park. This is the one that I was talking about that we can certainly add on on the front side of your tour. And um, this is most commonly July. The fish will start running by the end of June. Usually they were a little late this year and they know that they're going to be coming. So uh, you can schedule something in July and go out there uh, as a day trip. This is one thing though, that you have to realize with small airplanes, you are going to be uh, susceptible to weather at times. So that does play, change people's plans up here in Alaska. And just a few more pictures out here at Brooks Falls. Uh, again, getting very close to these big coastal browns. Of course, they are putting on a ton of weight. And actually, it's kind of interesting. They have a fat bear challenge that just wrapped up last week where they create a 16, you know, team bracket, but it's not teams, but it's each bear. And they kind of have a competition to see which bear will put on uh, the most amount of weight during the season. So they will uh, have a number and a name for each one of them and they're, they're able to track them. And they actually, you know, a lot like the, uh, the orcas, they're able to see, you know, mark them and they, they know which ones come back year after year. And if you have that really, really good lens, that's a picture that you can get like that of them fishing uh, up there on the falls. And it's not always just fun. Uh, there's a lot of this dominance that goes into play for the best fishing 
areas. It's also very interesting to watch these bears fish because they are not just born with the ability to, to fish. They have to develop this skill. So they learn that from their mothers and some are better than others. Some are going to be way down the creek and just scooping up what they can get of leftover carcasses where the most dominant bears will be up on the falls. Uh, more flights here. Um, when we head up to, say, past the Arctic Circle, going up to Kaptovik, we're going to be on a little bit larger planes, the Dash 8s. I do like these. Uh, they're going to be just big enough for our group, so right at just uh, 28 passengers. And the polar bears, this is on our three bears tour, which happens in the fall because this is uh, very sensitive as to the time that, that it can happen. So that's only the only tour that will go up north to Kaktovik. Uh, also on our three bear, three bears tour, another thing that's unique, and you can certainly do this other times of the summer, is going out to Kodiak. And what we will do is we will put you in uh, these smaller float planes, as you can see right there. And we're going to fly around and we're going to look for uh, these, again, big coastal browns, much larger than what we see in the interior because of the amount of fish that they take in uh, during this type time of year. So Kodiak, uh, if you're not familiar, it's an outdoorsman's playground, a lot of fishing, a lot of hunting over there. Um, but we just don't do a lot with tourism because we're kind of limited on the different things uh, that you're able to do. You can see behind the group there, yes, we get pretty close to these bears, uh, but they do not have, you know, tracking collars on them or, you know, the invisible fencing, I've been asked that before. No, they, they are out there fishing, but they are not interested in you because they're obviously trying to get their food for the summer. And another thing, we do have some flight seeing trips that we operate during the winter months. As you can see, our folks all bundled up here, and that's uh, a glacier landing that will happen out of Talkeetna. Obviously, ice conditions do change that, but um, on a beautiful day, in March, it's fantastic viewing. Another cool trip is heading out here into Wrangell St. Elias National Park. Uh, this probably is one of the times where you, you really have to be in the air to understand the scope of how large Wrangell St. Elias is. And of course, it butts up to Kluwani National Park. If any of you have flown to Alaska in about the last hour and a half, take a, take a gander over your right-hand side out of the plane and all you will see for as far as you can see from 40,000 feet is gonna be mountains and glaciers. And that is this area that we're talking about right here. Uh, but we use these smaller planes to get back uh, into, of course, the park and we'll spend a night back at the Kennecott Lodge. We also will tour the mine back there. But uh, this is of course our glacier landing that I was talking about before. We do this in both the summer months and the winter months. And uh, again, getting right up close to those mountains, but we go with the best flight companies in Alaska. So safety always takes priority. If again, conditions are not safe, we will end up just canceling that trip. Uh, we do also have a helicopter trip on our winter tour that's available. Uh, this will be uh, something that you'll fly out to uh, the face of a glacier. Um, you could get there by snowmobile, but it takes quite a while. So this, this will get you in the air, but also get you out to the glacier, which is really, really neat. And uh, we also have an option to fly over Knick Glacier uh, on one of our tours, which is another one that's accessible by four-wheeler during the summer, um, snow machine during the winter, but uh, you can fly over it and again, kind of grasp how large that is. Now, getting over to the fishing, um, this is something that you know, I would say a majority of our clients are at least somewhat interested in when they come to Alaska. We do have a couple of options that are included with our trips. Um, there is actually grayling fishing if you want to fly fish back in Denali Park. Uh, but, you know, you're looking at, you know, grayling that are, you know, 12, 14 inches. They're not a, a giant fish. It's not something that you're going to take home and eat either. It's all catch and release. But we do have uh, an adventure day in Cordova as part of our um, Untamed Alaska. And you would be able to go out, they'll fish for salmon, uh, maybe rockfish. It's really, really all kind of depends on 
how the runs are going, but the guides in Alaska are very good about, you know, not trying to force it and, you know, go with the fish that are cooperating. Um, another thing that we have is fishing down out of Homer and that's uh, on our wild Alaska. And that can be, again, a combination it could be rockfish, salmon, halibut, and some pretty nice ones there, as you can see. Uh, this is another one out of Seward. Uh, this was somebody who came in and did the, did the fishing before their trip. And as you can see, they kind of got a whole array, salmon, yellow eye, uh, halibut. And, you know, not everybody's going to catch a giant halibut like that. You know, I think everybody's heard about the 300 pound barn door that you want to try to lug up from the bottom of the ocean. But, you know, that's just not probably, a, there's not a very good chance of that happening. However, fish like this, this, this fish will run probably in that 130 pound range. So, you know, that's still a big fish, but even, you know, a little bit smaller ones like this, these are perfect for eating, you know, and that's probably in that 25, 30 pound range. So you'll have the ability to say if you want to keep one or let it go, but uh, they do have size restrictions depending on what part of Alaska you're in. Um, and I don't think they've released what that's going to be for uh, 2022 quite yet, but uh, I would expect it to stay similar to 2021. And if you want to go catch a big goldfish, no, it's not a goldfish. This is a what they call a yellow eye rockfish. They're beautiful fish, uh, but they are they're uh, very um, unique. There's just not a lot of them because they're a certain strain of rockfish. So you are limited to just keeping one of those a year now, I believe. Now on the Kenai River, this is uh, again, another place where people love to fish. This is the salmon fishing. Uh, a lot of folks will be, will be fishing for either silvers or reds. And uh, that'll kind of depend on the time of the summer that you went up there. Now these young ladies, they woke up at 2.30 in the morning to go on this trip. And I know because I took them to the boat ramp. And uh, they had a blast. You know, it's it's a beautiful river to be on. And I think everybody's heard about the Kenai and just, you know, how special it is. Unfortunately, the king returns uh, just haven't been that good. So they've kind of shut the king fishing down um, the last couple of years. But if it's something that you want to do, there is still kings to be caught out in the salt water. And you can also go to a place like the Russian River which has uh, smaller kings, but your numbers are, are going to be uh, much better there. And then, of course, the almighty protected fish, I'd say that tongue in cheek, but uh, if any of you know rainbow fishermen, uh, that is kind of the, the gold in the Kenai River. Tends to be better later in the season, you know, really as, as late as you could possibly get up here. And uh, just another beautiful one that Matt, one of our employees, caught. Uh, this particular trip, he actually caught one that was a lot bigger than that, but I don't want to show you something that is maybe not realistic. It was kind of a once in a lifetime fish. Now, one other thing I wanted to mention on our winter tours, um, we do have <clears throat> a stop at the muskox farm. And this is kind of neat because, you know, these are obviously really interesting animals and they will tell you all about them. And they also uh, have the store here where you can buy their fur, uh, which is a very, very highly sought after fur uh, for knitting. So that, that's just another kind of off the wall thing. And one other, I'd say off the wall thing, um, our winter tour, or not our winter tours, but our fall tours, uh, which come back down the Alaska highway, we have probably some of the best wildlife viewing um, out of any of our trips, because obviously we know later in the year, uh, those animals are moving, you know, some of them are being chased by hunters. Some of them are chasing because of love. And uh, of course we can see the beauty in the landscape later on in the year. And this was actually a picture that one of my guests took uh, on the Denali park trip, but you can see how close they were to the road on the bottom right-hand side, that orange stake on the road there. And they had went on the whole 92 mile trip and didn't see a moose. And then these two were actually uh, fighting. They had their horns locked and were fighting when the bus pulled up. But uh, those are the types of things that you can see in the fall. And obviously in the fall colors tour, we see more uh, diversity 
in the, the wildlife because we're traveling on such a long, long path uh, all the way from Alaska down uh, to Seattle. So uh, a couple bears that, again, I took this with my cell phone picture when I was driving back this fall, but uh, they were playing with their mom and I had some video, but I couldn't get it to quite cooperate here with my PowerPoint. So uh, again, just a view of kind of what our, our uh, landscape would be traveling back in the fall uh, across, again, Canada, and uh, hopefully that'll continue to stay open. And uh, we're looking forward to our 40th year in 2022.